this video, I'm going to be talking about how we go about plotting the tangent graph. Now hopefully at this point you will have already seen my videos on the sine graph and the cosine graph. And those two are very similar. I often say that they are essentially brothers, those two graphs. And those two functions in general, they're very closely related. But the tangent is a little bit different, so I often call it the cousin of the other graphs. Because it is related, it's similar ideas, but it's definitely a very different beast if you look at it in this way. So, to get started, we'll begin with the values we already know, the exact values for tan. So we know that tan of 0 is 0. We know that tan of 30 is root 3 over 2. Uh, sorry, root 3 over 3. And most importantly, we know that tan of 90 does not exist. Now that is going to be an extremely important fact to bear in mind. Tan of 90 does not exist. We showed that with a triangle, where we tried to make a triangle with one angle being 90, other than the already existent right angle, so two 90 degree angles. And we found that when we did that, we couldn't do the opposite over the adjacent, so tan of 90 could not exist. Now that's going to throw up a few problems when we're talking about our tangent graph, because somehow our graph is going to have to not have a value at 90. Somehow we're going to have to be able to not read tan of 90 off the graph. And you might want to think already, how is that going to work? How would we possibly show that? But before we do that, I want to show you this picture here. So this picture is just an extension of the picture that I used for cosine and tan. So this was the picture I used for cosine and tan. It was just a triangle. This is a hypotenuse of 1. And so we worked out that this green length here must be sine of theta, and this yellow length must be cosine of theta. And we used that to talk a bit more about sine and cos. In particular, we used it to extend our definition to bigger angles. And eventually, we extended our definition to all possible angles. Now, all I've done to this picture is I've added a couple of new lines. So firstly, I've added this black line here. This black line is a vertical line. It touches here. So this is the line x equals 1. And you can see it just touches my purple circle here. Now, we have a name for it straight line that it touches a graph exactly once. We call this the tangent line. So there is a very close connection here between the tangent function and tangent lines. It's not a coincidence that they have the same name. They are very closely related. So that was my first addition, was this black line. My second addition is the red line that was originally length 1. So this is a hypotenuse of 1. I've extended that red line, so it's no longer a hypotenuse of 1. That's important to notice. That's not happening anymore. But instead, I've now got a new right angle triangle. So if I look at this base, this blue line, and this red line, this is a different right angle triangle. And this time, I've got this length here. This base is 1. In terms of my theta, which is this angle, my adjacent length is now 1. So that's something slightly different. I've lost the hypotenuse being 1, but I've gained the adjacent being 1. So what that means is tan of theta is just opposite over adjacent, which is opposite over 1, which is just opposite. So actually, tan of theta is just this blue length here. This is the opposite length of this new, bigger, right-angle triangle. So tan of theta is this blue length. That's how we can throw tan of theta into the graph. So we said sine theta is the green length, cos of theta is the yellow length, and now tan of theta is the blue length. Okay? Now what's interesting here is that tan of theta is clearly less restricted than cosine and sine were. Because the green length and the yellow length are very restricted, they can only go 
in the unit circle, which means that at an absolute maximum they are 1, and at an absolute minimum they are negative 1. Whereas tan can go a lot bigger than that. Tan is already up to 2 here, so whatever this angle is, this is given as a tan of about 2. So tan of theta is about 2 here. So we can definitely get bigger than 1, and we can also get smaller than negative 1. So tan of theta isn't playing by the same rules that Simon Cos did. It's got its own system going on. Now let's consider what happens as we go up here. I know that tan of 90 doesn't exist. I know that. So what happens if I make theta 90, if I get my red line all the way straight? Well, you'll see, the red line just disappears because it no longer touches the tangent. The blue line doesn't make any sense, and nor does the red line really. So this is another way of showing that tan of 90 makes no sense. It didn't make sense in the triangles, it also doesn't make sense in our unit circle, because the blue line has just disappeared. Now, ignore these numbers at the bottom for that kind of thing, because the computer doesn't quite know how to handle something not existing. So it gets a little bit confused, tries to give it a value. So here, see, it's calling it 57.29, that's nonsense, there's nothing to do with that. There isn't a tan of 90. Doesn't make any sense. Right, so tan is this blue line, and so you can see here, between 0 and 90, we've got a nice definition. Between 270 and 360, we've got a nice definition. But what happens if I go beyond 90 to, say, 100? Well, I've still got the same line, but I've had to extend it in the other direction so that I can get to the tangent. Because if I extended it this way, going up here, it would never reach the tangent, so that would be useless. We extend it backwards instead. But then the blue line still makes sense, it still exists. And it goes, oh, it repeats itself. So we're doing that. And then it repeats itself, and the blue line happens again. So what's interesting about the tangent graph is unlike the cosine and the sine graphs, the tangent graph repeats itself every 180 degrees. So if we start at zero, and then it goes all the way up, and all the way back to zero again, and then it does the same thing again. So the tangent graph repeats itself every 180 degrees. That's different to the cosine and the sine, where they were repeating themselves every 360 degrees. So we need to remember that the tan graph is 180 degrees periodic. We can also see, as I say, we're getting massive values here. It would appear, and in fact it is true, that I could make my tan of theta as big or as small as I would theoretically like. So these lines on the graph are going to be heading off to infinity or negative infinity. Because I can make this angled absolutely tiny, and again this is just graphing software, it's not perfect, so I can't actually make my angle as small as I would like to make it. But in theory I could make that angle absolutely tiny, 0 0.0000001, and I would get a massive value for tan theta. So what that tells me is that we are going to have lines that go all the way up and all the way down, like we do with y equals x, or with quadratic graphs. We have infinity coming in. We didn't have that with the sine or the cosine graph, but we are going to have that with the tangent graph. Right, so just to show you, this is my first plot, so this is just the exact values we already knew. The, we only knew four values for tangent, because tan of 90 doesn't exist, so we couldn't put that on. These were the four values we already knew, and using a bit of logic from the circle, because of the way that it repeats itself and it becomes negative, we can also add on these. So I'm looking at this, and I have no idea what tan's going to look like, just based on my exact values. Because it seems to be going up here, but then also sort of doing this shape. I mean, yeah, it looks very, very odd. 
not like something we've seen before. So I'm interested to see what the graphing software does when I add in y equals tan of x. Let's have a look. Oh, hang on a minute. Let's just pause it there. So look, it came up from here and then all the way up. Then all of a sudden it was down here again. Coming up from there and all the way up. And then all of a sudden it was down here again. There we go. That needs restarting, it's fine. All the way down here again. And then it came up. And then it starts again. And then it starts again. So that is a weird looking graph. That's not the kind of graph that we've seen before. It's repeating itself, as we said, every 180 degrees. So that, that fits with what we wanted. So after 180 degrees, we've had this sort of upward bit and this sort of downward bit. And then we have that again, upward, downward, upward, downward. So it is repeating itself every 180 degrees. It has gone through all of the coordinates, all of the exact values we knew about. So that suggests that it is correct. But it's got this weird thing. Ah, if you look at this carefully, you'll see that the weird thing that's happening is around x is 90. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see that these are getting closer and closer to these lines where x is 90, and then x is 270, and then x is 270 plus 180, because remember it repeats itself every 180 degrees. The weird behaviour that we get is around this x is 90, because 90 was a problem for us. We've already agreed that 90 was weird. And if we looked at the circle, as soon as it had been 90, so it was getting closer and closer to 90, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then suddenly it was tiny, it was really negative, it was tiny. And then again, it was massive, and then it was tiny, and that's what's going on here. It's massive, and then it's tiny again. So that is what the tangent graph looks like. And it's weird, and it's new, but it's very interesting got these sort of curls going on every 180 degrees. Now, we do actually have a name for the weird bits, the x equals 90, and we can display them on our graph. So this is what the graph I just showed you look like. Here it is with those lines drawn in. So this is the line x equals 90, this is the line x equals 270. Here we've got x is negative 90 as well. So all these dotted lines, we call these dotted lines asymptotes. So that is a fancy name for these kind of limits to the lines. And what's important here is that the tangent graph is not defined at these asymptotes. It's not defined here. Tan of 90 makes no sense. Tan of 260, make, 270, sorry, makes no sense. Tan of negative 90 makes no sense. So we can't define them, we can't show them on the graph. So instead we use these dotted lines just to show it doesn't exist there, it doesn't make any sense there. And then after our asymptote, we start again. Right from negative infinity, and we get up eventually to positive infinity, and then we start again. So those are the tangent graphs. Weird, but once we've got them plotted, they actually turn out to be a little bit easier than their cousin. The key points in this video. The tangent graph is very different to the sine and the cosine graph. The y value of a tangent graph can be any real number. So that is different to sine and cos, where it could only be smaller than 1 and bigger than negative 1. The y value can be any real number. Tangent graph is 180 degrees periodic, which is different to sine and cosine, which were 360 degree periodic. And finally, we have these things called asymptotes, which, repeat, which are where the graph is undefined. So tan of 90 is undefined, tan of 270 is undefined, 
so on and so on.